This is episode two of our two-part series on how to properly install the shadow overflow. In episode one, we showed you how to drill your aquarium. And in episode two, we're gonna show you now how to properly plumb the overflow. Here's a list of everything you are going to need to complete this process. Now we're gonna show you all the necessary components that we need to complete the plumbing. You're gonna need the shadow overflow rear box, and you wanna make sure that it's removed from the aquarium while we do this. You're gonna need inch and a half PVC pipe, which you can get in any color you want. We sell the red and we sell the black inch and a half on our website. So if you're looking for colors, we have them there. You're gonna need three inch and a half unions. You can use schedule 40 or schedule 80. It's your choice there as well. You're gonna need an inch and a half gate valve. We recommend a gate valve over a ball valve because the adjustability is a lot better with a gate valve. You're gonna need some PVC glue. We recommend standard medium grade PVC glue. You're going to need some way to cut the actual PVC pipe. So you're going to need either a pair of cutters or you're going to need a saw or a hacksaw. You're going to need a file or some sort of router or sandpaper to, to make the edges uh, nice on the pipe. We're going to show you how to do that as well. And also you're going to need a tape measure and a marker so you can measure and mark the pipe properly. We've went ahead and uh, pre-cut our pipes and have them chamfered here. We used a saw to go ahead and cut our pipes and then we used a router to router the edges and, and make the chamfer on it. Um, if you don't have a saw or router, you can use the hand cutters to cut your pipe and you can use um, either the file, so you can file down the edges and actually make a chamfered edge or you can use sandpaper to sand the edges as well. But it's important that you chamfer the edge of the pipe because without a chamfered edge, it's gonna to be too flat and it won't glue properly inside the overflow. So the chamfered edge is gonna allow the pipe to slide into the overflow and actually slide into the fitting properly with the glue. So make sure you do chamfer the edge. And uh, again, there's many ways to chamfer pipe. Just look on YouTube or Google it and just look for how to chamfer pipe. So we have three pieces of PVC cut here at four inches in length. You can cut these from four inches up to 10 inches in length. They're gonna actually glue into the bottom of the overflow before we put the unions on. So you need three pieces that are four inches in length up to 10 inches. And then we also cut three pieces here for the inside overflow. One's gonna be two and a half inches, one is gonna be three and a half inches, and one's gonna be seven inches. These are all approximate lengths because you may need to modify the inside box plumbing and we'll show you how to do that here as well. So if you use standard PVC handheld cutters like you see here, um, just make sure that after you do cut the pipe that you chamfer the edges properly because PVC cutters actually will make the edges swell. As you press down, the pressure from the cutter will cause the edges of the pipe to swell, which puts the pipe then out of tolerance, so it's actually larger than the hole that is on the bottom of the overflow. So you wanna make sure that you do properly chamfer the pipe down so it does fit in the hole properly. So now we're gonna go ahead and glue the PVC pieces into the bottom of the rear of the shadow overflow. So we're gonna show you how to actually glue those in properly. So first you wanna make sure all your pieces are chamfered and you have a nice clean edge on them. And Try not to dry fit them in there too much because you can damage it if you push them in too far. They're meant to be glued first and then pushed in because the glue actually softens the plastic inside the overflow and softens the pipe and allows it to go all the way in properly. And then also if you look inside the overflow, there's actually a stopper that's inside there that will actually stop the pipe. So when you push it in, it can only go so far. So after we've glued the PVC pipe, we're gonna go ahead and put some glue inside of the fitting on the bottom of the overflow. And then we're gonna slide the two together and just give it a, about a quarter twist. And then just hold it there for a few seconds. And that's it, now just let it set up. After you glue the first one in, you're gonna to proceed to glue the second and third pipe in the same way. All three are gonna be done exactly the same. Now that we've got all three pipes glued in place on the bottom of the overflow, we're gonna go ahead and glue in three unions on there as well. We recommend taking a union apart and then using one side and gluing it 
onto the pipe on each one. So now we've got all three pieces of PVC glued into the bottom of the overflow and we have our three unions glued on. We're going to talk about how to plumb from the union down to your sump. So in most cases with Synergy sumps, they're all inch and a half fittings that are on the sump. So you can plumb directly into the sump with inch and a half fittings. If you have a sump that doesn't have inch and a half fittings on it and you need to reduce down to one inch fittings, you can easily go out and get an inch and a half to one inch bushing. And this, what you would do is just take it and slide it right inside of the inch and a half union. So this allows you to remove and put on inch and a half to one inch pipe whenever you need to. So if you don't need to reduce down any of your fittings and you're going inch and a half to your sump, what you're going to do next is get a short piece of PVC, slide it in the union, and then we're going to use a gate valve, an inch and a half gate valve. And that gate valve is just going to go on here to allow us to adjust the water volume coming through the primary siphon tube. So with the gate valve, you don't have to necessarily install it right here near the overflow. You can also install it near your sump um, or in a location where you can't access it. Just for display purposes in this video, we've showed you where it goes in line. And then you can either have your emergency and your secondary plumbed in any of these as well. So the primary necessarily doesn't have to be right here. And you can actually have it in the middle if you would like, or you can have it on this end if you like as well. So you can plumb these in any configuration you want. You'd have your primary, your emergency, and then your secondary. The valve only needs to go on your primary. Now we're going to show you how to plumb the inside rear box of the overflow. In this situation, we have it on the display here to show you, but in a normal situation, you're going to already have the bottom plumbed, and then you're going to have this attached to your tank. Now we're going to take the three pieces that we cut earlier. You had a piece that was two and a half inches, a piece that was three and a half, and a piece that was seven inches long. Again, these are all approximate lengths, and yours may vary depending on the flow that you have running through your tank, but we're going to start with these, and then you can modify them to your needs as we go along. We're going to take one of the U-pipes that's included with the overflow kit, and we're going to take the 2.5 inch piece, and we're going to stick it inside of the U-pipe. Now, you don't need to press this in too far. A quarter of an inch is plenty because there's no glue on this, so it's just enough to be in there to hold it in place. The U-fitting does fit really tight. And this is normal. Again, as long as you've chamfered the edges on your pipe, then everything will slide in perfectly fine. Once you have that piece put in there, we're going to go ahead and stick that on your primary siphon side. The primary siphon side is the one that has the gate valve on it. Next, you're going to take the second U-pipe that's included with the kit, and you're going to take your three and a half inch piece of pipe. Again, you're going to put it inside the U-pipe, using caution when putting it in there. Slide it in a quarter of an inch, an eighth to a quarter is fine, and this is going to go on your secondary. This is the drain that does not have a gate valve on it. And then last, you have your seven inch piece of pipe, which is going to go in your spot for your emergency. In this case, we're putting it in the center, but you can put these again in any position that you wish. You can plumb this overflow in a bunch of different variations. So. What we recommend is a bean animal style or a three pipe full siphon style overflow system. It's going to be your quietest and your most fail safe system. If you only have two drains on your sump, you can use just two pipes. You can run it with just two of the U pipes. If you only have one drain, you can run one. This is very versatile and you can run it any way that you decide to plumb it. Now that you have the plumbing inside the rear box completed, you can go ahead and turn on your pump and adjust the flow. You're going to use the gate valve in this situation to adjust the flow to bring up the water level inside the box above the primary siphon tube. The secondary siphon tube is going to be partially underwater, not completely submerged. Again, you may need to adjust the pipes inside on the primary and the secondary to go with the amount of flow that you have going through the overflow box. Once you're done with that, Put your lid on and you're done. Enjoy your tank. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all of our latest products. Also make sure to like this video.